Braille? I had another dream. Mama was there. Did you see her? Yeah, I saw her. She made me pancakes. I think it was my birthday. Because people always get their favorite food on their birthday. A whole lot of it. Do you have a birthday too? Uh... I mean, I guess. One day I was... I don't know if it was gifted or cursed upon the world, but I, I suppose that I have a date of origin, yes. Oh, then what's your favorite food? Is it pancakes? Wait, do you like pancakes? I mean, I do. It used to be my favorite food when I was a child, and then I discovered sushi. Me too! On my last birthday, I ate ten of them. I was so full, I didn't eat anything else that day. My mama makes the best pancakes, and some of the neighbors make really good noodles. And, oh, one of the neighbors made a lot of bread. Do you have any neighbors? Uh, where I currently live, yes. I just don't talk to them very frequently. Where I'm from, yes, and I talk to them more frequently, but maybe marginally so. Oh, do they share their food with you? Sometimes. Ours do too. Our neighbors and my mama take turns making food for the whole village each day. So you live in a village. Everyone also takes turns doing chores and watching the little kids. I don't need to be watched anymore, though. I'm old enough to help out. I miss everyone. I've been gone for a while now, haven't I? I wonder if they're worried about me. Ah, speaking of helping out, we should probably go now. Yeah, we got us some things to do. Um, alright, first things first. I think we have a plant lady to help, so we need to go back to top, top, top. Top, top, top. Hi. Big robo dude. Um, I believe we have a jar of dirt now, or a sack of dirt or something, that we can now pour in on this figure here. Yes, I have dirt. Cool. We're gonna... I hope this helps you grow, little seed. The seed's in the soil, but it looks a bit dry. We have a tube of water. Good thinking, Braille. Water should help the seed grow. Hmm, the dirt's nice and moist now, but what if it dries out? There's only so much water from this little tube. I'll hold on to the tube for now, just in case. We've given it dirt and water, but will that be enough? Ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna hope so. We'll see, maybe there's more water that I have to give it at some point later on, but for now we're doing okay. This looks like water, I don't know if I can tube it out. Can I tube it out? I apparently cannot tube it out. Alright. Um... Okay, so, uh, where last we left Nico a day ago, we had figured out that the elevator is busted because it's missing a button that will take us to the ground floor. And we found this coffee can that says coffee grounds. So I'm wondering if I take the scissors and I cut out the word ground. Oh, maybe we can make a button out of this. I can cut out a piece of the can and fold it into a rectangle shape, just like arts and crafts. Hmm. I don't think it's supposed to be this simple. How are we going to connect it to the elevator? Well, let's find out. We have a button. A simple button made from a coffee tin. Let's see what happens. The button fits snugly in the slot, but I'm not sure how to connect it. Hmm. All I know is the button works by some kind of magnetic technology. Don't ask me how magnets work, though. I didn't even finish high school. Magnets, huh? What if I... The magnets don't stick to the aluminum, but... Ooh! What if I just folded the magnets under this edge? Mm, it's holding together, if just barely. I hope that's good enough. The magnetized button. Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, let's hope this works! The button fits snugly and... I think I hear the machine powering on. The button completely fell apart. Hey, you tried. Oh well. Alright, so... Uh, is there some way to fasten this together, maybe? Uh... 
let's see. Does this take us back to the coffee shop? Is that, is that, am I, okay, I'm correct. Cool. Um, I don't see anything I could use here, so we'll hang on to that for a second. Let's, let's see here. We also have an upper right pathway. I don't think the coffee shop had the answer. But I remember something about office supplies over here, perhaps? There was, uh, I thought there was tape past the clock lady here. Yeah! So if I, you tried, it's the thought that counts. Oh. That just doesn't make me feel good. A tape dispenser. Oh! I could hold it together with tape! I should have done this in the first place. It's not your fault, Nico. I thought it would work without it. Taped button. The magnets are secured with tape. Alright, cool. Maybe now we have a way down the hill. Um, do you do anything? Some kind of computer terminal. Well, alright. Never mind then. <laughs> that was, uh... The big door and a mean computer down there that yelled at me because it was like, Hey, you don't know what you're doing! I, even though I do know what I'm doing. Alright, let's try this. Let's hope this works! Reactivating elevator services. Please input security code to continue. What? That's... never happened before. The... squares? Huh? You saw them, right? They were on the door and- Oh, nah, the square stuff happens all the time. I meant the whole security code thing. But then again, the elevator hasn't been this broken before. Hmm... I guess we should go look for a code, Braille. Uh... Well? Please input security code to continue. I think this is that mysterious film thing. Was it six, eight, oh, one, four? Nope. Access denied. Six, three, zero, one, four? Oh, oh, I got it. What? It works. I don't know what you did, but it actually works. Good job, kid. You're a genius, you know that? Well, I had help from Braille, too. Oh, right. The whole messiah business. Anyway, ready to go? I'll be up ahead. All right, we're just going to climb in the elevator with a strange dude who has a fishing pole on his back. Oh! Thank you for holding the elevator door open for me, mister. No prob. Hop in. Wonder what would happen if we had just walked away and left him standing there with his arm out. Ah, yes. Elevator music. Sure is taking a while. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm stuck in an elevator with the Messiah and also literally God themselves. This is awkward. Oh, maybe we can chat to pass the time then. You heard me? I mean, sure. All right, Braille, should I? Ooh. Ask about his job, the city, or the library. Let's find out. So, what do you do at your job? You seem really busy. I, uh, I fix lights, mostly. But now I also deliver stuff and refill high-energy phosphor to structures that need them. High-energy? You know, the super-concentrated glowy stuff they had to process in factories. It's what powers most of the city's stuff. Woo! We used to have a small army of delivery robots doing that, but lately a bunch of them have been breaking down. So until they fix them, I'll just have more work on my plate. I haven't slept in so long. When will the robots get fixed? I have no idea. It's all up to the scientists over in the labs. But they seem really concerned about something else lately. Oh? Never a good sign when even the smart folks are worried. This city is very big. It's smaller than it looks. Getting pretty crowded, too. 
first there was the refugees from the Barrens, and now more Glen folks are moving in too. Oh? It's just safer here, you know? I mean, it's not a haven by any means. That square stuff that we just saw? We get more of that here than anywhere else, apparently. I noticed. We're lucky it only seems to affect the city's infrastructure. The landmass itself is still holding up. Which is good, since there isn't much solid land here in the first place. Can you tell me about the library? I'm supposed to go there. Oh yeah, that's one of my main delivery spots. Those reading lights are pretty high maintenance. But I always feel out of place surrounded by smart people. Well, I guess you're pretty smart yourself, so you'll fit in fine. You and, uh, Braille. Anyway, it was nice meeting you. Uh... Nico! Right. See you around, kid. Gotta run now. He seems in a hurry. I guess we should hurry too, Braille. People are counting on us. Let's go find that library. Okay. Beep boop. Beep boop. Oh! Another human. Uh... You alright? Ah, the messiah. Perhaps this is a sign. Tell me, do you think you can fix the world with the sun? Honestly, I don't know. I've been getting mixed messages. I know. But what do you think? I... think... I think I should listen to Braille. After all, Braille helped me get this far. I will take your faith for an answer, then. What do you mean by that? It means... whatever you think it means. Kinda feel bad for Nico. That's a really coded message, and uh, one that he might not have picked up on. Faith, huh? Oh! Do I go toward the arrows? Oh, there's a door down there. I wonder if there's a way down. Ah, oh, this door's open. Hello? Oh, fish head. Oh, hey there. You have a lot of fish. Yeah, I'm worried about him. Oh? I heard something about how the square particle stuff just took out a major pipeline. I guess I should take advantage of the running water while I still can. Yeah, I can imagine that water would become a precious commodity for your fish. Evening news, evening news. Are you here to purchase a copy? No. Newspapers are for grown-ups. Grown... ups. Yeah! What does that mean? It means people who aren't kids. Kids? Uh... Aren't you a kid? I am a robot. Right. Well, this is definitely leading us new places. Where are we going? Oh, hello. Hello, person. The library is up ahead. Thanks! Oh, I didn't even mean to come here yet, but alright. Cool. When the world ends, it would be better. Would it be better if it was gone in an instant or slowly fading away? To be honest, I'd rather have the former. I. Uh, why? I guess, you know, existential dread and the concept of oblivion make you as uncomfortable as they make most people, huh? We don't like Oblivion. People don't like the concept of the end. Because we don't know what exists beyond. Oh. Hello? What?! Ugh, I didn't say anything! Well, stop staring at me then! I was just looking at your book. Yes, you're in a library. There's books in the library. Um... Go bug the chatty one upstairs! You mean... this one? Oh, hello! Do you need directions? Let's see. This area here is mostly historical accounts. The reference section is downstairs, and, uh... I'm not sure where the children's section is. Sorry. That's okay. I'm not really looking for books. Oh! Are you here to... look for the author, then? No? Oh, that's good. Uh, I mean, that means you won't be disappointed. I've been volunteering here for months, and I've never seen him not even once. He works together with the head librarian on publishing, so you'd think he would show up at least once in a while. But... he doesn't? Yeah, he seems kinda reclusive. Which is weird for a guy who supposedly travels the world! 
Maybe it's just around people. Definitely a chatty one. The author's books cover a wide range of topics. It seems there are no subjects he does not write about. Quite the renaissance man, don't you think? I guess so. But he's been focusing on documenting the world as of late. Oh? They say the city is the last bastion of civilization. Soon these books may be the only thing we have to remember the rest of the world by. Oh. You know, I thought that the... That, like, this child, this female child's face was like a buckle on a sack. I thought that this was a collection of pillows. I didn't realize it was a person. So, that voice was wrong. What do you got? Yep. Still scared of ladders. There's computers all over in here. Some sort of plaque. Oh, hello? The author is so cool! I heard he can travel all over the world with a flying machine. That's how he gathers material for his books. Wow! This is probably the meanest voice I've done so far. You might be the librarian up there, bookhead person. This is a coffeehead person. Wait. A big book with a black clover on the cover. The title says, A Comprehensive Guide to Phosphors. Oh, jeez. As a general rule, if a phosphor loses its glow entirely, it cannot be relit unless exposed to the sun. If the phosphor is merely dim, it may be possible to boost it through exposure to another phosphor of higher energy. But even so, the boosted phosphor will never return to its original brightness. Oh, jeez. Blue. Out of the common phosphors, blue phosphor is of moderate levels of energy. It can exist in both organic and mineral forms. The mineral form is most commonly found in the metallic sand of the barrens. The organic form is most commonly found in the phosphor shrimp and their secretions. Although the light emission of blue phosphor is powerful, it has what I would describe as self-conserving properties. That is to say, the glow may not be constant. Most forms of blue phosphor will stop glowing if left undisturbed for long periods of time. If using blue phosphor to power machines, a motor should be set at a baseline level of activity to ensure constant agitation of the phosphor. Alternatively, live phosphor shrimp can be used. Green. Out of the three common phosphors, green phosphor is of the highest energy. It is also the rarest of the common phosphors, as it can only be found in organic form. Known sources include the sap of phosphor trees, fireflies, and various mosses. So this explains why the glen was glowing. Although this phosphor is present in the ubiquitous ground-covering moss in the glen, it is only in minute amounts and almost impossible to concentrate. Green phosphor is ideal for industrial use. However, due to its relative scarcity in past over harvesting, there's currently no reliable source. Thankfully, at least locals of the Glen still have enough to get by. Finally, red. Out of the common phosphors, red phosphor is of the lowest energy. Why is it that the city is built on the phosphor of the lowest possible energy? It exists exclusively in mineral form and can only give light when in solution. The dilute red phosphor abundant in the city's water channels can be concentrated and induced with currents. This can create an artificial high energy state with greater luminosity. So, run phosphor through water, make glow glow zip zap? One major caveat is that the phosphor in this super saturated solution will precipitate out rather quickly. As soon as the phosphor recrystallizes, it loses its glow permanently. If using supersaturated red phosphor as a power source, make sure there are proper facilities or services that can replace it frequently. So this city is in danger of burning out, it seems. The author's latest books are really something, yeah? The head librarian just released a bunch last week. Oh? They're big compendiums. You'll see them if you look around. Kinda different from his earlier works, though. I'm used to reading his travel logs and novels, mostly. Nice. So what do you think about the author? I... don't know. Have you read his stuff yet? If not, you should. Well, okay. Hello? The author publishes books at a highly accelerated, almost inhuman pace. In fact, he's put out more books in one year than most authors do in a lifetime. According to the head librarian, there is still a large amount of material he has written but not yet published. One cannot help but to wonder where he can get so much done in so little time. I did the calculations, and the numbers simply do not add up. Maybe he... can stop time? No such mechanism exists in this world. 
Is that actually possible in your home dimension? Nah, I just saw it in a movie once. About superheroes and stuff. <laughs> How adorable. You're going through these pages pretty fast. Actually, it's mostly pictures. Oh? Yeah! The author doesn't only write books, he also illustrates them. Sometimes he makes books out of only pictures. Neat. A big book with a black clover on the cover. The title says, Emergence of New Ecological Niches in a Post-Sun World. Okay. Apparently Nico's pretty good at pronouncing stuff, huh? Phosphor Shrimp. Also known as seed shrimp in certain vernaculars due to the shape of their transparent coat, these aquatic invertebrates are the most abundant life form in the oceans surrounding the barrens. They are tiny. The common firefly, a nocturnal beetle with a vibrant glow. Sometimes captured in mass and put in jars to be used as living lamps by the glen's residents. This has inspired the now common practice of using phosphor shrimps to do the same. However, for red phosphor, because it exists only in mineral form, I don't think there's really a way for you to do that. Alright, let's come talk to Bookhead over here. Um, what are you doing to that book? Don't worry, these are my own books that I wrote. I just pulled them off the shelves to modify them. I have to cross out some sections. Most sections. Huh? How come? Because otherwise they'll think I copied him. Him? The author. I mean, I really don't see the point of writing anything anymore. The author is just going to write about the same thing and then everyone will love it. And nobody's going to remember the books that came out before his. Oh, uh... I mean, I ain't hating. I can see why people go nuts over his stuff. That guy's got major talent. But it just hurts, you know? It's never fun when people call you a copycat for something you wrote about first. I can see that. People call me a cat all the time. Even though I'm a person and cats are pets. And Mausers. I sure hope people don't think I eat mice. Heh. <laughs> And I guess we're in the same boat, kiddo. I think that went a little over Nico's head. Excuse me! Oh, you are the messiah. Welcome. When I first entered the city, a big robot told me to look for a library on the surface. This is the same library, right? Affirmative. Oh, goody! Well, we're here. What do we do now? The big robot only said there'd be clues here. That is a question for the head librarian, George. Allow me to call her. She is not picking up. Is she not here? She is here. She is in the archival room upstairs. When she is concentrating on her work, she will ignore any and all phone calls for several days. Yikes. Can you go get her in person then? Leaving this post is not in my programming. Then can I go myself? Of course. The archival room is accessible through the stairwell behind me. Gotcha, thanks! <sighs> I'm on my third cup. I can't feel my limbs. Um... But I have to stay awake! I need to find out how this book ends! Uh... Curse the author and his beautiful cliffhangers! Yeah, I'd be scared too. Oh, unauthorized entry. Library card required for further access. Wait, what? Library card required for further access. I don't have a library card, though. We're gonna get one. This is a question for the head librarian, George. Allow me to call her. Oh, God, we're gonna sit here and go through this song and dance again.
Yeah, me too, kid. G is not picking up. I figured. Are you sure you can't just let me through? Letting you through without a library card is against my programming. Oof. Even in an emergency? My programming is not flexible. I have not been tamed. <sighs> okay. So, next goal, library card. Maybe we can get lucky and find one. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to find a, f a library card. This is... This is awful. Awful! Alright, let's... I guess try and explore a little bit more of the city. It's locked from the inside. Well, that's not good. Run, Nico, run! I know, this is painful for you. Painful for me, too. I have to sit here and... Oh. Hello? Oh. Yeah, me too. Braille, did you see what happened? Uh, yeah. My vision went blank for a second, and then I saw something. Like, a really short dream. I wonder what that was about. I wish I knew, kid. Oh. It's a faded flyer. It's a faded flyer. Uh, I bet they're all gonna be faded flyers, huh? Hello? A curious marking on the wall. It looks like a... Graham? I don't... Okay, I don't know anything about that. What's the... Oh! It's strangely warm in this room. Oh, the cat! Are you lost? Me? Do you wish to join us? Join... your cats? Yes. But I'm not a cat. I don't walk on four legs like they do. You have cat eyes. My eyes are normal people eyes. Ooh, normal back home. Your head is shaped like a cat. But I'm just a person. You are still welcome here. I protect lost people as well. Thanks. I'm not lost, though. I've got Braille to guide me. I see. Oh. Uh, I have to wonder. Oof. Oof. My eardrums. I have to wonder how much trouble they went through to get those cat sounds recorded. Cats don't like sitting still or making noises for microphones. Oh. Yeah, okay, sure. Um. Um. Okay, so there's two... Two ways. Three ways. Three ways. Alright, let's go down first. Oh! There's some big plastic discs in here. Looks like they're supposed to go in something? Wait, Braille, are you really gonna take these with us? But they look so heavy. Alright. Hey! They're actually pretty light! I don't know what they're gonna be for. It's a big book. The title says, Understanding Robots. Yeah, and I can't read the book? Okay. Uh, what about this? A lantern plant. There's a note attached. It says, Thank you for working so hard, Mr. Lamplighter. A jar full of red glowing fluid. Ah. Uh, okay. So that's the Lamplighter's house. And I just stole some of his stuff, I guess. Okay, hold up. I want to go check that other doorway. Run, kitty, run! Sorry. Run, not kitty, run. Oh! 
Braille! Did you see that fox just now? It just ran behind the tree. I'm sorry if you are looking for me. But I cannot talk to you. Not now. Um... But... Can you promise me something? Huh? If... You can find a way to return. Please do. Uh... What do you mean by that? No reply. There's no one here. Just gone, huh? Okay, alright. Whatever, that's a little weird. If you can find a way to return, please do. Well, um, not 100% certain what that means, but alright, I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> the original Cuphead. Hey kid, want some soup dumplings? They're guaranteed to contain only a minimal amount of industrial byproducts. I'll pass. This smells kind of nice. What is it? Breaded fish. I toasted the bread myself. I see. Ah, that's a euphemism. Are you here for your photos? No? Alrighty then. I'll just, uh, stand here. This stand smells a bit like burnt sugar. Yep. Still getting the hang of making these fried candy skewers. They don't taste too bad, though. You want one? It's okay, thank you. Hey, hey, ready for me to blow your mind? Uh, okay. Okay, so, I've invented a medicine to prepare everyone for the upcoming water shortage. All you gotta do is dissolve one of these pills in water. And then you drink the water. And then you never need to drink water again. What? It also makes plants grow faster. I have a feeling we're gonna need that for maize. How does it work? Here, why don't you take a free sample? Oh, thanks. Don't thank me, go spread the word. So... Do I need more water? To put in my little, my little cup thing, I guess. Oh, <gasps> it opened. Uh oh, I didn't prepare for that. Um, what? Oh, can I not though? I don't even know what I'm doing in here. It said X. I guess that means that I don't need to go in there yet. It looks like I can unlock this door. Ah, this... Okay. So this is how I get from one side of the city to the other. Got it. Or, well, I guess from, like, the front side to the back side? Instead of having to go through the alleyway? I don't know, man. Everything is interconnected. It's difficult for me to remember. All right, Nico. I don't know where we're going, or what we're doing, or how, or why, or... Um... Um... The, the music change here has me greatly concerned. Me boop. This is the printer room where machine parts are made. Also robots. Oh. It may help you to go one color at a time management. Okay. It can also help to write down previous attempts management. Attempts? If all else fails, wait for the puzzle to reset. Maybe you'll get an easier one next time. Wow. Okay, so apparently there's a puzzle. I know there's a big main door. I don't ever go in the main door first. Hello? The luminescence index of liquid red phosphor decreased by a factor of 3.57% this past week. Alarming, to say the least. 
That's the sharpest decline I've seen, and the number is only increasing. But I'll have to further concentrate the phosphor now for it to be of any use. It's hard to believe, but there's a good chance the city could run out of light in as little as six months. What are we going to do? I, you know, that's a fantastic question there, bud. I, mm, what am I doing in here? In order to gain further access to the labs, you must pass the security system test. Uh, huh? You must change the color of the lights into a specific configuration. Allow me. Specific configuration, huh? Do I click on the individual lights? Oh, I do. Okay, so there's yellow, blue, red, and green according to what I just saw. What's this? One color at a time. Okay. One light's correct. Access denied, nine tries left. Okay. Zero lights correct, okay. Two lights correct, okay. Three lights correct, okay. Um, I don't know which three. I got a plus one on one of them. Two lights correct, okay, so green is definitely on the end here. Two lights correct, okay, so this is definitely blue. Um, four lights correct, I don't know which four. Four lights correct, okay, so I think yellow might still be correct then. Five lights correct, hey, look at that. Perfect! I could go further. Oh dear. Oh dear. That, there's boxes. I don't like the boxes. Hello? Oh, what's in here? This is so tedious. I miss the good old days before our robot repair and robots broke down. Now the robots have to be assembled by actual people. But, aren't you a robot? No. I mean, do I sound like a robot to you? Not really. But, your head is a TV. What does that have to do with anything? Uh, never mind. These robots are malfunctioning at a frightening rate. Physical damage from square particle anomalies is almost impossible to revert. No living person can touch them unless they have a death wish. But if we're lucky, sometimes the squares go away on their own. And not before taking away one of the robot's arms or legs. Or head. Okay. I cannot stop spinning! This one isn't active. Gee, I wonder why. Um. Uh, okay. I'm gonna assume none of you in here have any idea what the heck is going on or why. I'm looking for a sign, people! Monitoring, monitoring. Oh, the square particles just took out two of my robots in the Glen. We might have to put off the water analysis project for now. Well, that's great. Sure are a lot of computers here. And they look important, too. I'm picking up some more disruptions in Sector 8 of the city. This is consistent with our earlier findings. Not good at all. The Baron's engineer just reported another sighting of the particles in the cliff area. Well, nothing unusual at this point. Hmm. I wonder what the author would do in this situation. Dr. Silverpoint usually references his works. None of us have been sleeping very well in light of recent events. The square particles have got a few of my robots last week and... Oh, she fell asleep. I can barely keep my eyes open, man. How does Dr. Silverpoint get all that energy? Hello? Oh, shoot! If I had known you would be here so soon, I would have turned off the darn lock! Hello there! Sorry about the weird security measures. It's okay. Braille helped me solve it. Did they now? So... Can I help you with anything? Yeah! Do you know how I can get a library card? A library card? You'll have to ask the library for that. I tried. 
I needed to see the head librarian, but I can't get to see her without a library card. But at the same time, she's the one who gives out library cards. Really? Huh. <laughs> that sounds like George, all right. I'm sorry you caught her on a bad day. Aww. Wait, I know. I can just give you my library card. It won't be hard for me to get another one. Wow! Thanks! There. You're all set, I think. Wait. Shoot! I forgot. The front desk library bots have facial recognition. And my photo on the card won't match you. Unless I tape a photo of my face to your face. Uh. That was a joke. Who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky and the robot will take it anyway. Worst comes to worst, you can always find somewhere to take a photo. Okay, there is a photo spot in town. Something is poking out from the shelf. It's a tube of glitter glue. You can have that if you want. Never know when you need to glitter things up, right? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I have tons of those. Thank you. So, you've been walking all over the world, huh? Mm-hmm. Jeez, I can't imagine. Do you get really tired sometimes? Kinda. But I don't mind. It's actually really pretty. Huh. I'm glad you think so. Even with the sun gone, the world is still a beautiful place. What did the world look like with the sun? Oh. Uh... You know, it's kind of embarrassing to admit how little of it I've actually seen. Oh? Ironic, isn't it? Even though I'm the world's leading researcher, all I do is stay here and build robots. They're the ones exploring the world. I just write down the data, crunch numbers, generate graphs. Right. I've been seeing robots everywhere. I just thought it was because the world was too dangerous for most people to explore. That's... not far from the truth, actually. But I know someone who still does his research firsthand. Oh? Even after the segments of land started collapsing and access to the more remote areas became difficult. I mean, yeah, I built a machine that could fly. Something we all thought was not physically possible. Oh, that's... I asked him about working with us, so he provides us with all sorts of insights from time to time. But for some reason, he really didn't want to build robots. Or, more specifically, coding them. How come? Beats me. I mean, he's happy to work with robots. In fact, he even... Ugh. It's been a while since we last talked. He must be busy with his books now. Yeah. So, that must be Dr. Silverpoint. Hey, Braille. Doesn't the lady look kind of familiar to you? I wonder if she's related to the robot lady who gave me the amber. I almost want to ask her about it. Should I? Uh, you know, it's not a bad idea, kid. Let's go. Dr. Kip Silverpoint. Oh? That's... How did you get this? This robot lady in the parents gave it to me. She looked kind of like you? I see. was supposed to be such a breakthrough, you know? I even based her on myself, so I'll know it works. Breakthrough? We wanted to build a robot that acts like a person, thinks like a person, a robot that isn't bound by its own code. Oh! But, turns out, you can't really build something like that. Too many contradictions in the code made her unstable. That was the only time I'd ever seen a robot go rogue. Scariest day of my life, tell you what. Rogue? But she seemed so nice when we talked. Even if she talked a little weird. Ah, uh, she's been repaired for some time now. My friend was able to stabilize her volatile state through his own means. A real miracle worker, that. After he was through, she ended up turning out just like how I wanted. But the damage was already done. I gave up on her back then. We all did. I'm sure she realized that. And now she won't ever come back. She won't even answer my letters. I'm sorry. Ah, sorry for rambling. You should hold on to that amber, okay? I will! Sad. Sad, sad, sad. I hate to end this on a sad note, but I think that this is going to do it for our lesson here today because it has been kind of a long one. Hopefully in the next lesson we'll be able to uh, 
test out that library card and see if that works. And if not, then we'll find a way to get something that vaguely resembles a library card so that maybe it'll work. Because it sounds like we need to go upstairs and talk to George. I think. So yeah, thanks for tuning in and following Nico. I hope you took good notes. And with that, uh, class dismissed. See ya!